Managing your users is probably something you'll spend a lot of time doing as an LP administrator. We do try to make it as easy as possible and in this video I'm going to walk you through how to edit an existing user, some of the things that you'll see when you're reviewing user accounts, and then how to create a user on your LP site. So to start off with, I'm, I'm signed in as an administrator and I can go to the list of users by going to users and then users. So I'm going to jump in there really quickly and just a reminder here too, like if you want to see fewer columns or something's not relevant, in this case posts is probably not relevant to your site, you can remove anything that you don't want to see from the tables. Now this again is a test site. There's a lot of test data on this site. Um, when I view this, you can see right now there are, there are 5,008 items it's saying. So that's, uh, that's users in this view. Altogether, there are 5,010 users on this test site and 251 pages of users. So that, of course, is uh, a very large list of users to go through. Um, there are some filters at the top. You can see these are the role designations. And you can see in each role, there are only a few users. So um, roles were explained in the previous topic in a bit more detail. Depending on what you're doing on your site, um, like across all of the LP sites, there are really three roles or four roles. Now so let's go with three that you should really be focusing on. Uh, first, the administrator role. So these are users that have access to everything in the back end. They can create posts, they can delete users, they can manage e-commerce things. They can do everything on the site. Be very, very, very careful about who you give administrator access to very powerful role. Um, it should only be used by people that absolutely need it. So if they don't need it or they just need it for a small thing, um, it's better to assign another role and if some specific action needs to be performed, it's better if a, an experienced administrator is doing that as opposed to just giving a lot of people administrator access. So that's a really important one. Um, subscriber is the second one that I wanted to mention. This is what most of your learners would be. The only exception and the reason I started off by saying three or four is because if you're using e-commerce then the standard role is customer. Um, in, in both cases they're effectively the same. They have the same permissions. It's, it's what you would give uh, to any learners on your site. So they cannot create, really create anything new. So no posts, no course materials. Um, they can't see records of other users, anything like that. Uh, it's strictly access to the site on the front end. Um, nothing in the back end and what they can do is extremely limited. And then the other one uh, that is, is worth understanding is group leader. If you're doing anything with LearnDash groups to organize users into groups so that you can manage them, um, their access to courses as a group and manage the reporting together so that the um, reporting is compiled for a subset of the users that are in WordPress. Um, groups are definitely a very important function that we'll talk about in another topic, um, but it's an important role because if you assign the group leader role, it means those users, if they're assigned as group leaders to the groups, they can see reporting results for that group. They can also see assignments, essay questions that have been submitted. Um, they can even communicate with uh, groups, uh, group members, I should say. So anyway, those are kind of the, the key three or four roles that you should definitely be aware of and understand what they're for. I'm going to start off by editing an existing user and why don't I just go and edit the user that I'm using for this video right now. So when I edit this user you can see there, there are a couple things that, that show up here that are relevant. Um, some of these don't actually apply. So as an example, if it's a regular subscriber or customer, then of course there would be no visual editor that they would see. And this is irrelevant because we control this through uh, the toolkit. So if we go in here, then, then there's the option here for, instead of managing on a user by user basis, you can manage it by role. So using this module here, you can just use the settings and set it by user then. Or sorry, I set it by role then. So let me go back then to users and we'll take a look at the users that are in there and edit my profile again. So click on edit and scroll a little further down. Username cannot be changed once it's set. 
it is fixed. So that's one that you can't change. These other values can be modified in here. Um, most of these these values are not something that's shown by default on the front end of LP sites. If you do use them, if you set up a custom registration form that collects those values or you, you retrieve them somehow with shortcodes in the front end, which you could with user meta, um, they can be populated. They're just included with WordPress, but again, it's, it's kind of an optional thing and normally we don't collect them on LP sites, but they may be relevant to your site. Again, we don't do anything with biographical information or profile picture, um, but WordPress does make those available if you're doing something with them. So again, there's a lot of flexibility, but in most cases, there's a lot that you don't need to do frequently. Um, all right, if password uh, somebody forgets their password, you can generate a new password here. You can log them out of sessions from wherever they are, because normally, just a heads up there, um, WordPress default when somebody signs in is to keep them signed in for two days. So that's if they're signing in again or they're accessing the site again from the same device and same browser. Then it would recognize them and uh, they wouldn't have to log in again. If they click on a checkbox to remember them, so um, in a lot of registration forms there's a remember me option, um, or sorry, login forms, and if that is the case then it remembers them for 14 days instead of two. Now down here, uh, you can see that this is not a great example because administrators are automatically enrolled in all courses. Normally there would be a listing here, and I'll show you with another user, uh, that lists the course they're enrolled in and allows you to enroll and unenroll them from this page using these, um, these the tables here. So I can do that with groups now. You can see if I add that. So this is the enrolled groups. This is all available groups on the system and we can manage things that way. All right, these I'm going to ignore. Most of your learners it's not applicable to. Uh, course information is down here. So this is a lot of the Learn Dash course data. You can see records for people. Um, you can even go in and edit their completion if you need to. So there's not a lot of test data on the site for users in terms of completions, but I will take a look at that as a regular subscriber in just a second. Uh, billing address, this comes into play uh, during e-commerce. If you're using e-commerce on your site, on the checkout page, it is mandatory to collect um, billing address details. So they're captured here. Shipping address is not something we use on LP sites normally. Um, so, so these would be ignored and not captured during checkout. And then there's the option here if you need to permanently delete someone's data their course data that could be done here. This is a very risky option, so make absolutely sure you want to do that before you go ahead with it. So let me go back to a user now, and let's take a look at one of these test users and see what exactly, so this is, uh, let's just go test user 1002. So let's take a look at what's different. So if I scroll down here, again, most of this information is the same. You can see I can generate a new password. So if I can, I can do that, and I'm just gonna hide that. All right, it's hidden now. Um, so you can use a new password generator for a person. They can also reset their own passwords in the front end. So just to confirm that, because that's normally the preferred approach. I'm just gonna open an in incognito window here where I'm not signed in. If somebody goes to log in and they're not sure what their password is, uh, this is where they can click to reset their password. and. A minute ago when I was talking about remember me and the 14 days versus two days, that's this field right here. So let's go ahead, forgot your password. Um, this is how somebody would normally do password recovery. So that's that's kind of the preferred way instead of admins resetting passwords. User can just do it themselves. The only time that's an issue is if when, when uh, someone doesn't have access to the email address. But again, you could change the email address um, in the profile section. Um, and then they could go ahead and reset with a new email address. All right, so down here we can see this now shows user enrollment and courses. So three courses available on the site. I can't click those because those are already assigned to the users. And then adding and removing courses individually for a user is easy to do from the profile page just using the arrows. And then make sure once you've made any changes that you do go ahead and click on update user. So within this one, you can see there's some progress. Um, actually, no, there's 
there's these are not started edge, so this is not a great example. Um, oh, and in this case, you can see that the access is through the group. Um, so this is through a learn dash group. Um, but let's go ahead, and I'm going to. All right, I didn't. Uh, I didn't save that. I'm not going to save it. I'm not going to save my changes. That's not what I wanted to do, sir. I didn't want to edit that course. I wanted to click on the details. There we go. So for this user, if I wanted to mark something as complete, um, these, what I'm clicking here, these only apply if there are topics beneath the lessons. Um, let's just say, though, for this user, uh, yes, I do. I want to do that. It's going to prompt me. And I'll click those and say this user is now com has has done some some things in there. If for any reason you need to um, mark progress for learners on their behalf, it's maybe they already completed something. You're setting up a new site, but they completed it in an old site, an old environment. You're not migrating records over, but instead you may want to manually mark that they completed something, or maybe they did something in a classroom. You want to give them credit for it in the online version of the course. Uh, that's where you can do that. So yeah, if you can, if you see this one now, I'll click on details again. It shows that they have completed three of the 13 lessons, and it's got a record of that now. All right. So so that's basically um, editing user profiles. One thing to be aware of: um, if you use user, so the um, if I just go in back in here, if you're using the uh, front end login, so it it does it does allow a verification, um, a manual verification, so that users can register an account, but they can only sign in once you've verified them. And uh, if if you are doing that, then when you go into the user, you'd see another field for uh, verifying them. And, and do be careful with that one. So make sure any administrators are verified as well. So the field, if I had it turned on, it would just uh, show up. I think it shows up up here. But anyway, it's just a checkbox. You would check that off, and then it would al allow the users to sign in. So be careful with that one. We don't use it on very many sites just because of the risk, the potential risk that's there in locking people out. But uh, it, it is an option if you need to do that. Um, before I close with uh, talking about users, a really important function that is available on the site is this switch to. And what that does is let you view the site as that user uh, without having to sign in as that user. So you don't need the username, or sorry, you don't need the username and password. You can just click the switch to link and it's going to effectively let you see the site as that user and then you can switch back. So if somebody's noting some really weird behavior, they say they can't access something or it's not showing their progress or something's broken and you want to see what they're experiencing, then the best way to do that, and when you do this a lot, is with uh, Switch 2. All right, so now as you can see it's switched me now. So it shows now that I'm user 1002. Um, it doesn't show the admin bar up here anymore. Um, so I am signed in as this user. Um, what I wanted to do was go, I wanted to show, when I go back to sample course now, you can see the three that I marked off for this user, they're now listed as completed. So the three of the 13 that I just did in the previous step. So one complication though, if you do switch to another user, is if it's not an admin user and the admin bar is disabled then for that user, there's not an easy way to switch back. So that's that's kind of a complication there. Uh, you can certainly log out, and that would take care of the issue. Um, so, so yeah, if it's not an admin user and you've disabled the admin bar, it can be a bit cumbersome to get back in as the user you were using. Of course, you can just, just sign in again. All right, so we're back to using our, our test user. Uh, that is essentially the quick overview of users that I wanted to cover here. We will be covering more information about importing users, and then, of course, we'll talk a lot about Learn Dash Groups as well.